Hi gang, Elizabeth here with Dandy Soap, and our new DIY project for today is we're going to paint a snowman reaching for a tree. And I love this picture. I saw it on Pinterest. It is available for sale on eBay. I think it's selling for like $8.75. I do not have permission from the owner of that to post the photograph. I'm just going to try to duplicate it, and I'm going to bring you guys along with me, and we're going to see how we can try and accomplish the same photograph I was inspired by. It is on a stretched canvas. With that in mind, the following supplies will probably be used, but not all of them, and we will work this out as we go along. I'm going to do my best to teach you some shortcuts and techniques on painting this photograph to accomplish the same thing. You will need one stretch canvas. You'll need a set of lights. In the Waverly Chalk Paints you see here, we may use all of them, we use some of them, but I will be certain that I tell you which ones we used as we go along. That way, if you want to use acrylic paints, all you have to do in paint is bear in mind the color, what you're trying to accomplish, and the hue or illusion that you're trying to create. And therefore, these paints don't have to be specific that you use to accomplish the same photograph. Just use the color as a guide. Start. Now the idea here is to make this look as though it is a barn. So we're just going to straight take truffle and just brush it on there. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exact because what this is doing is creating a background for us to put our snowman upon so that he shows up because he is white. And so you do not have to be exact on this because we want it to look like a barn. So as you can see, I'm just taking the chalk paint straight out of the bottle and just brushing it on here. I'm going to take the hazelnut and because it has like golden hues in it, that will give us kind of that wood effect and I'm just sporadically placing it. I'm not really trying to be specific. I'm just hitting it on this board to blend in with that truffle. And like I said before, wood has brown and golds and grays in it, depending on its exposure and the oldness. And we want to give it that primitive kind of a look. And I know that this video may run long, but just so you have the idea, and I may cut some of it out, just so you won't have to see so much of it. Now, this is steel, and steel is going to give it that cold driftwood look. And I'm going to just kind of brush it, um, because that is wet, and it will fade right in there if we're not careful. So I'm just taking my wide flat bristle brush and dashing it here and there just so I can kind of get a wood grain look going here. Being wet, I need to give it a moment and let that chalk paint dry, which doesn't take long, so I'm going to pause the tape. Now, some of this paint is still damp, and I want to make slats of wood, like I said, as though this were a barn. So I'm using my ink, which is technically black, and I'm using a number 12 flat brush, and I'm just using the edge, and I'm just going to show you guys as best I can. You don't have to use a ruler. You can just swipe it down through there. Another one in there. I'm going to do my best here, and like I said, these do not have to be even because we are putting other details on this. I'm going to hit that again. It's just a little wet there, so. And you see how I'm not really trying to make my strokes exactly straight? Because this is going to have the, just the appearance. And this over here is going to have a snowman, so I'm not really worried if that slat goes all the way down to the bottom or not. Here's another trick. Take the back side of your brush, dip it into the ink, and just get it on the end. And what we're trying to do here is create some knots in the wood. 
So basically, you'll just kind of do a little circle. See that? Just do some, do a, do you a few circles. It don't have to be many. And see how that's smearing out? That's fine. We don't want it to be like deep dark circles. We just kind of want to give it that effect, and uh, maybe some dashes in there of like some heavier grain on the wood. It doesn't have to be specific. I'm just trying to give it that effect, even if it's kind of dashy or sparingly that's fine it just gives it that effect you see what's happening there and we're just using the back side of our paintbrush nothing big and then you can kind of swipe it out the way a knot runs it kind of swipes out some so it's not perfect you can just do a varying on that because it's just kind of deeper in that part of the wood and then that background a little bit more if we want to for now i'm not really worried about it so my brush is still a little bit damp and i'm just going to kind of smear over top of that black with what i've paint i've got left in my brush and that just kind of calms it down a little bit as y'all can see if you're watching closely you can see how i'm just going over top of that black with the, whatever's in this brush. And if it smears the black, that's great. You can go sideways, good background effect. That's all we needed to do. The next thing we're gonna do is create our snowman. Okay, to make our snowman, I'm basically gonna use my paint jar to make my snowman. And this is the white. Now, the really cool thing about the snowman is you could actually use like the other whites, the more duller whites, like a cream or uh, pastel or pearl or whichever, oyster. And this is, uh, I'm just going to take the lid. And at this point, I'm just going to go around the lid. And that's just going to kind of create my round circle. And then I can hit that. And it's okay if this other color gets mixed into it. I'm not really heavily concerned about that at all because we need our snowman not to be bright white he actually has a grayish blue silver effect to him okay you see how i just colored that in I just made a little circle all right so that's his bottom half now his middle is really kind of offset it remember the weight of the snowball sits into the bottom half and sometimes depending on the hardness of your snow will determine just how much it dips in. So we're going to make him appear as though that's a really heavy ball. So our next one is just going to be a partial thereof. But we need that round effect. And we may have to make our bottom a little bit bigger. Now, the snowman's head, we commonly make smaller. So see, I'm just making his bottom a little bit broader so that there's some deviation between his bottom and his middle, okay? Now, to make his head, I can't use this lid. It's just way too large. But we're going to freehand it, so I'm going to put the flat down, the big one, and I'm going to get my number 12 flat back out. And I'm going to just kind of freehandedly make him his head. And remember, it's sitting atop of the medium, so we just need it to go up above the medium just slightly. I hope you guys can make this out. I'm trying to paint on camera. Okay, so we've got our snowman. And you see how I'm doing C's? I'm just doing a comma, 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 comma. And bring, bringing that around to get the snowman's head. Same with his medium of his body. And with his bottom. And we're going to let that dry. Because we need the snow white to be a little more grayish. And we also need it to be a little more intense. So while that is drying. Because chalk paint will shift on you if you keep messing with it when it's wet. You'll just actually move it. Now we need to make our tree. So I'm going to clean my brush out. 
because I need my tree to be very white and intensely white. So this tree bows out and then he is reaching up. So in aiming his hands upward, I'm guesstimating somewhere about here. And then the star, the snowman is actually looking up and the star is about here. So with that in mind, I'm going to take my number 12 flat brush. And the broadness of your stroke, when you're down here with your brush and you press down, as you pull outward, it's going to become more narrow. So think of a tree. So remember, I said that tree is bending. So it's going to be a wide. So I'm pressing down. See, I'm leaning my brush this way. So I'm pressing downward, and as I come up, I'm getting more narrow. And that's all you got to do is draw that line, because you can make it narrower. Okay? And just pull your chisel off, just like that. And he has, like, the snow underneath him. And like I said, this chalk paint dries fast, but at the same time. So we are just going to kind of make like a little embankment of white down here. And we're just going to shift upward over here at him and then come back down. And I'm just hitting it don't try to be particular because the details that you fill in make it look more realistic more like it should so we have our snow bank now um so if you have a more narrow flat brush like this one this one's a 12 and this one's a number eight now what we're going to do with this is we're going to make our little pine branches coming off of this tree a brush. I've got a water basin over here beside of me, a, a, my water holder for my paints, and I just get mine a little bit damp, and then I'm going to dip into the white, just like that. And the same thing is take some of the excess off. You see how I'm patting it on the sides of the jar? And you want to take that excess off because you're going to be making these limbs to droop downward and outward like feathers almost. So up here near the top, we'll do, you're going to have smaller ones. And then when you get closer to the bottom, of course, they're going to be longer ones. And we don't need to do a whole lot of branches coming off of this tree. But I'm just putting some tree branches there to kind of build me a guide so that I have my branches coming off my tree. Do you see how I'm offsetting these branches? Think about a pine tree. They're not across from each other, such as when we have an artificial Christmas tree. They are actually offset. So when you are painting them, you've got to paint them a little bit offset. A theme to go with this, it would be reach for the stars. And I think we all should do that top is the star so we're not going to worry about that tip okay now in coming back to this even though my brush is a little bit damp and has just a little bit of paint on it I can attempt to try and put the little bristles coming off of the branches to make them look bushy and as you see I'm holding my brush straight up almost and just doing some dashes and when you paint tree branches, think about the pine needles. And if they were all white, what would they look like? And think of a tree, a pine tree, whenever you do paint a tree. No matter what you're painting, always think of it in your mind. See it in your head when you're painting. And it will make painting so much easier because it will just come... Naturally, you'll just see what you are supposed to see, and you'll be able to give it that characteristic that you're looking for to try and accomplish that. And I'm not worried if it looks real light in color, 
because this is building my barrier. And so I'm going to try to set this up so you guys can see a little better. And see, if you get it a little too heavy, that's no problem because guess what? That can just be another branch coming off of that same tree. See, like that. And you can just kind of bring it in and make it look a little more bushier. It doesn't have to be specific. Just think about a pine tree when you're painting a pine tree. Whatever you're painting, think of it. And see, when you first hit, you might want to come out here and paint and then go inward because your brush has new paint on it. And you can knock the excess off. It don't have to be that heavy. But when you run out, you just go back and get you some more paint. And just keep doing your little dashes. I'll make sure I'm still in the screen here. Now I'm going upward. See how I'm just kind of sitting on my brush? We need some kind of coming out from it. As though that branch were in from the tree in the front of us. So to do that, as you can see, I'm kind of coming here. And just making a little more intense white. Okay, so we have our little tree going here. So unless you just feel like you need to put some more branches on it, I think it looks fine just like that i don't think it needs anything more and i'm quite happy with it honestly um through here see how the snowman has some definition to him where we just did little dashes and that's what we want we want that little dashes it makes him look different from his body parts and then this one I'm just going back and forth a little bit and we'll come back because we do have the intensity on him and we need to let that chalk paint dry so that we can move to doing the rest of him. So let's work on our star up here since our white over here is dry. So now we've got to accomplish our star here and I have some true oach and um, this color is a primitive color, and that's more what I'm going for here. So the best way to do the star is I'm going to turn it sideways because my tree is going that way. I'm going to take the flat brush, and the way you want to do this is with a star. I hope you guys can see this. Let me try to hold it up, and that'll be easier for you to see. You're going to do it like arms, like like um. A jumping jack uh, kind of action. You're going to have one down, one down like an arrow. And then going inward in on this, we're going to reach out. And now we've made our X. So we've got this one coming to a triangle. This one coming to a triangle my brush has gotten broad on me and this one coming outward and back in like a triangle and here a triangle okay we can make that triangle now all we need here is a point and just like that we have our star see that so you can with this type of color, this is more of a, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? This color, uh, almost like a blending medium, because it's most of the time used for shading versus a solid pigment color. 
and so uh, you have these in your paint groups of colors so that you have your ones that are blenders and this color is more of a like a medium blender now you see we have our little star and I'm not going to mess that point because that's what we want we want it to look just like that okay is everybody on board with the star I'm trying to get that canvas to catch that little bit of paint right there I guess I'll have to leave it it's okay though it's just trying to be too particular you can mess yourself up now you can go back and make that star more intense but the way you have to do it with this particular type of color because it's more of a a, a blender um, is you'll have to let that dry and then hit it a second coat in order to get that intensity but this is fine with me I'm happy with it I like it, it is just fine star with it, it even though it's primitive looking we can leave it just like that another thing that so you could take like the truffle that we used earlier and I mean just basically get it just a touch on that brush see that and you're just going to barely touch it and I messed it up let me get some of that off pull this out that's what I love about acrylic paints is you can just take them and get that going again. I'm just doing the edges of my star. And there's more light in the center. If there's more light in the center, I'll go back with my True Oach. And just retouch where I got too much paint in that spot up there on that brown. And I don't want to cover it all the way up. See how it's going to give that shade to it? And that just gives it a little bit of depth. I'm sure y'all can see that showing up. Because I can see it. Now, to put a little light in the center of that star, just a little bit of lightness, of course, you could use either the silver lining or the white. And because I just want it to be kind of a very dim light, so to speak, I'm going to barely touch the silver. Got that on there. And I'm going to dry it out on my paper here. And I just want to put a little bit of lightness in there. And I'm just barely touching the center. Actually, I can be a little more intense. See how I'm going towards the points, but not into the points? I'm staying in the center, per se. And believe it or not, that little bit is just enough light. That's all you need, just a little bit of light. Okay. We got him going there, and it's all, it's a silvery white color. It's like very, very light, um, but it's just what I need here, and all I want us to do is to give that little bit of shade for my snowman. I cleaned it off too much, guys. That's the good thing about this color, the silver lining is you can be a little more intense with it. And you're not going to mess up. As you can see, we did this. Okay. See how I'm going here? And just that little bit of deviation in color is a plenty. And I need his... Billy don't need to be reflective because he's looking up. I need his back to be shaded. I'm going to leave his back shaded. Soften that. And then here, with his bottom, I need this to kind of glow a little bit. 
Don't want to mess that line up I've got going there. Just need it to be more deeper in the back. He's looking more reflective back here. That's what we're trying to create up here. And we do have to get this right because we got to give him some arms. See this? How we're putting the shadow in the back. That's all we are trying to do is put the shadow in the back of him. We don't want to Mess that shadowing up. Just like this shadow, we want that shadow. So it makes sense for him to be looking up. And I keep wanting to be stingy with that paint. When I do, I end up disturbing it. See? I need that to be white. And then his face, we have proper shading because he's looking up. Now we are about ready to start putting the details onto our snowman because we've got him blended and looking pretty good. This is a number six round. And the reason why I have this number six round is see how short but pointed those bristles are? Can you see that against my hand? Well, what this is going to do is create our arms. Now you could do this with a toothpick. You really could. You could even take the narrowness of this paintbrush and do it. So, <coughs> so what I'm trying to accomplish here is I need his arms. And his arms are branches. Well, <coughs> well, one of them is coming up from behind his head here. The other branch, they actually have a bend, almost like it's like he's got a bent elbow, like he has an elbow. Like snowmen's have an elbow, right? Down below this one and be in proportion with it. So we're going to come, say, right here. And we're going to reach our branch up. And there we go. We've got his branches arms built. See it as long as they're in proportion. And that's all you need to focus on is making them in direct proportion. Take the back of your brush again to make your dots. And we're going to do our best to get that accurate. So we're going to put one here because he's looking up. And don't be afraid to mash down and turn. Just make sure it's a good circle. In direct proportion, the distance between the eyes will be the same distance from the eyes to the nose. So that puts us somewhere in here. And because we need him to have a pointy carrot nose, and I just have to kind of work with it until I get it like I want it. Now, in you see how the nose is kind of crooked? The little carrot is crooked. That makes him very primitive. Can go to his mouth and work on his... Uh, Smaller than the dots of his eyes. So I'm using this number six round brush again and I'm just going to touch the paint. Just touch it. And I need to make him at least five little dots. Now to make him look like he's smiling, your grin generally goes up beside of your nose. So sometimes, believe it or not, that's the better spot to start out. Those need to be much smaller than the eyes. Now, it's going to be hard to get them round 
you might have better luck than me. That's always been tricky for me when working with primitives. But I want to bring, I'm going to hold my, I'm going to hold my picture up here to where you can see. And I know that he is smiling. So I want to make another small circle there. And then I'm going to do a third. And just don't worry about them too much because once the paint dries, you can go back and give them more paint. If that's what you feel it needs. Okay, so that's looking pretty good for his smile. He's smiling up at the little star. Now, I need to let his carrot dry a little bit because I need to make some lines in there, but I might have enough black that I can do some shading. I hope everybody can see that. And basically, it's kind of shaded here because he's looking up at that star so there's no light getting to his nose because carrots generally have like a little bit of lines to them because well it's a root fine to me um, I'm very pleased with it. it. At this time, if you feel like you need to do some shading, whatever's left on that brush, the dirtiness of that brush, should be just enough. You want to stay away from the top of his head unless it's right here in the top of his head, which is a little bit of shading. You can kind of rub at. Let's give it a little more oomph in the shading. As I said, it's just shading. If you overdo it, the great thing about paint, you don't try to erase it, you paint over it. You just paint right back over it. That's how it works. And see, so we're just doing some shading here. Kind of intensify this back here a little bit. Make it a little deeper. But stay on the edge, you know, just stay over like this, you know, like really shade edging because the back side of him and this this front side of him or watching this see how I'm just kind of shading down here at his back side so that his white stands out a little more just darkening it now I'm going to go around his head I start at the front so that I can spread this brush out to get a little more intensity on the back side of his ball here. Okay, so I got a little more intense there on his head. And I just need to kind of brush that out a little bit. Just a little too deep. Went in too far on his head. You see how I just took a little bit of white and now I've turned it to silvery gray. And that's kind of how you do it. If you got it too black, you just kind of hit it with some white and it'll turn it that silvery look. Give it that shading we're wanting. 
Painting is just like artistry. Every artist has their own style and their own techniques and their own way of doing things. And that's how you get good as you keep practicing. And every time you paint, you're going to learn something new about the way you do things. How you do it, your way of seeing it. And that's, my friends, is what makes it so special and unique. Okay, so we now have our little snowman painted. You can always go back and add more. It just, it you know, there's always something here or there that you wished you had to done this or done that and and you'll find a hundred of those things okay so remember i said there were like some snowflakes in the back so we're going to try to make some snowflakes if we can i'm going to use this silver lining all we need is to just make a few we don't need a lot so i'm going to put one over here and hold this up that way you guys can see it. And basically we're just going to draw, or excuse me, paint a line. And then we're going to do an X. Okay. At this time. We're going to stop, let it dry, and come back after a, a little bit of letting it dry, and then we're going to do our lights. We're now ready to put our lights on the back of our canvas. So, I had told you guys to get you some LED lights, or even the little floral seed lights. And instead of piercing hole, I've been playing with this. And I had, I don't know if any of you guys did, but I had gotten the candy cane LED lights from Dollar Tree. And they are intensely bright, guys. Look at this. That is like seriously bright. So in playing with these, if I turn this over and I, had, I tried to take the candy cane off, it wasn't working. So what I want to do is if I take this light and I press it against the canvas... And it's hard to see with the others blaring. But if I push it against the canvas, you can actually see that light coming through right there on that star. It's really intensely bright. And I don't think it would be necessary to have to cut a hole in it. See, you can see the star and you can see that star or that snowflake. And you can see how bright it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these candy canes directly to the back of this canvas. And the way I'm going to do it is rather than having these turned around where you can see the candy cane, I'm going to turn them around to where the light is against the canvas. So what I did is I basically took my canvas and I held it up to the light and then I marked an X. And just to double check myself, I actually put my finger on the snowflakes that I made and pressed against it, and then took a pencil and just made me an X where I know that light will, needs to go in order for it to reflect the stars on the front. And if that doesn't work out, then of course I can put a hole there. But what I'm going to do at first is go ahead and glue them to the back and see how that looks. Be right back. Now anytime that you are putting lights on something like this, remember the screw is where the battery part is and that's the part you want facing you uh, always trying to start with your first light closest to your battery pack and when, now the way i'm going about doing this guys is i'm putting the glue around the x on the outer perimeter of the x because these candy cane are plastic and so it reaches that glue without concealing my spot where my x is and you to look that worked out perfectly i have the lights actually glued to the back of this canvas and you can actually see those lights glowing on as i said before i have marked these this is very close to the wood that is why you can't get up to that wood and where my snowflake is but 
you can still see all of these like glowing little stars in the background. And that's what I was after. The This piece of craft paper from my granulated sugar bag. Uh, this is actually the inside liner of a four pound bag of sugar. And I'm going to take and place it on the back of this canvas board. That will hold the light inward. But a light glued underneath it. But I need just a little bit of light to come through. So let's see if that works. If that fixed it. See? Now that's what I want. I want that little bit of a glow of a star. So there's a small hole right there. And it's just enough to let that light through in that star. And that three jingle blocks here. And as you can see, I raised it up enough and I buckled it to the frame to where that wire will slide in and out there. Should these batteries ever, should these lights ever go bad and just totally have to be replaced, I can just tear off the craft paper and remove it. But this will allow me the freedom to be able to change out my batteries. I glued the battery pack to the frame here on this bottom edge. So at this time, I'm going to cut out my craft paper and I'm going to glue it to the back of the frame. The craft paper glued down onto the back of my canvas and I have my lights glued to the bottom of my frame and I can ably get to them and the jingle blocks are keeping that guarded and the craft paper is keeping the lights inside of the frame and concealing them on the back side and now we have our finished snowman reaching for the stars painted canvas and he looks awesome he looks really good and very very much like the one that i saw the my inspiration and i'm absolutely pleased with him and i certainly hope that you guys enjoyed this i hope that you learned how to paint uh please tag me if you did this diy and show me your photographs of your snowman reaching for the stars and i certainly hope that uh, you'll share this posting with someone who likes to do DIY projects and who enjoys painting or wants to learn how to paint. And if you will, give me a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up down there. Make comments and have any questions, please leave them. I'll respond as quickly as possible. Follow me on all the social medias, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr. And, of course, come over and join the group at Facebook. So until the next DIY, this is Elizabeth signing off. And you guys have a dandily, crafty, Wonderful day and Merry Christmas.